These families, camped by the side of a road and wondering where they will go next, say they narrowly escaped with their lives. First, the water level rose a little and we brought the goods to the rooftop. We could not bring the household with us. We came out on the highway with our lives, children and cattle. Late night, the water level had risen until it was knee deep. We are in dire straits. We are exhausted of moving our belongings here and there. Our homes and village drowned in the water. Most of the livestock died. We have suffered a huge loss. Severe rains and flooding is going down in Pakistan and it's already killed over a thousand people, including 348 children and has left more than 1500 people injured. This has been going on since mid June and I'm already embarrassed enough that it's the last day of August and this is when I'm talking about it. Anyway, 33 million people have been affected by this disaster, but you can imagine how much that's devastation done for the entire country. And also Pakistan's minister for climate change, Sherry Reman, said that the floods are unprecedented and the worst humanitarian disaster of this decade. Because of that humanitarian disaster, there's also been some pretty heroic rescues from random places like this. world's beginning to look a little bit unrecognizable. So anyways, uh, Pakistan authorities have responded to what's going on with this. They've been saying much. Uh, so this deployment of the army, army was also authorized to assist uh, with relief and rescue operations in flood stricken areas. Is what the country's Ministry of Interior said in a statement. The ministry said troops would assist Pakistan's four provincial governments, including the worst hit southern southwestern province of Balochistan. Hmm. Uh, meanwhile, flood relief centers are being established in various parts of the country uh, in order to assist collection, transportation, and distribution of, of flood relief goods to the victims. That's what the Pakistan Armed Forces have also said. Now, because um, I've got Jessica on today and we're uh, predictable libs, there was talk about climate change and why this is happening. You knew it was coming because it makes sense. Pakistan's priority at the moment is this climate induced humanitarian disaster of epic proportions. That's what Riemann said, urging the international community to provide aid given Pakistan's limited resources. And on Friday, Pakistan's Prime Minister Sharif briefed international diplomats on this crisis, stating that his country on the front line of climate change, despite a relatively small carbon footprint, must focus its rehabilitation toward greater climate change resilience. Which of course, no one's gonna listen to that, except back in July, there was a New York Times article that pointed out how Pakistan is so much more affected by this. as. The, one of those defense, uh, the, the, minister, the prime minister pointed out there, more from New York Times from July. Pakistan is long ranked among the most climate vulnerable countries in the world. It's according to Global Climate Risk Index, and it tracks the devastating human and economic toll of extreme weather events. The country is estimated to have lost nearly 10,000 lives to climate related disasters and suffered about $4 billion in losses between 1998 and 2018. The rains this year specifically was destroying things now have been 87% heavier than the average downpour. That's according to Sherry Riemann again, the country's minister for climate change, who linked the new weather pattern to climate change. She warned that the country should prepare for more flooding and damage to infrastructure as its glaciers continue to melt at an accelerated pace, causing more of these flash floods. Um, so Jessica, one more piece about this because I'm sure many people will Maybe this is why it isn't talked about much. That's Pakistan. Look, their infrastructure is bad because there was parts about that article that points out maybe leaders weren't big on the infrastructure process. Things get back and forth. A change leadership doesn't get anything done or finished. So many of these places, right after some kind of level of rebuilding happens, it happens again. Or the preparation for it just isn't there. So Pakistan, who cares? That's their problems. Except it happens here too.
People in Jackson, Mississippi are being urged to evacuate at this hour as dangerously high rivers, rivers threaten to flood streets and homes. If you are capable of getting out now, get out now, get out as soon as possible. Urgent warnings as the Pearl River near Jackson, Mississippi begins to overflow. Persistent rain this past week caused the river to rise and now at least 100 homes could face flooding. We went through the flood in 2020. Oh, uh, never thought it'd happen this quick. Anitra and Mickey Holder lost their home in the last major flood two years ago and just finished rebuilding. Now they're worried they'll have to do it all over again. Yeah, that's this place called Mississippi and it's, and it's another place called America. But do we care about that either? By the way, Jessica, um, I just saw this this morning, Jackson, Mississippi to, to go without reliable drinking water indefinitely. Because that's America. Yeah, that's America. It reminds me of Katrina. That's the context we have for how climate disasters, when they happen in communities of color, they're largely ignored. And by contrast, remember when the Notre Dame Cathedral was burning? Zero deaths, but we were throwing money at them and it was on the news and everyone was talking about it. What's happening in Pakistan, what's happening in St. Louis and in Jackson, Mississippi, it's happening to communities of color and it's being largely ignored and people are without clean drinking water, they're losing their homes and they're dying. This is what we can expect to continuing continue happening with climate change. And we have members of the right saying, you know, global warming's nice. I could go for it getting hotter. That's not really what we're facing here. Climate change is going to lead to weather disasters like this happening all across the world. And Pakistan's really a great example of how it will be largely ignored by the international community because it's not affecting wealthy nations, white nations in the West. That's really important to point out because who are our largest emitters of carbon that are causing climate change? Those exact nations. And so it's a racial justice issue. And the only way we're going to fix it is if people come together and demand we fix it because the government's already not doing near enough for the people in St. Louis and Jackson. This is one of those hard things, man, because with, even within our own country, we've talked about it every day. These divisions between folks and their political views and how it then connects to their identity. So if you're thinking, hey, who cares about those folks in Pakistan? They must be somebody I don't care about or they probably disagree with me. They're not Western countries, so therefore they're not Christian. Whatever it is that they want to have to write people off, we do it just even localized within the country. People may see what's going on in Jackson, Mississippi. And now there's the argument over whether or not the flooding is what destroyed some of the, uh, the infrastructure that would allow for this drinking water or if it was just some kind of poor plan. Planning. Remember what I just said about what's happening in Pakistan? They're like, the floods are killing people, destroying people's homes and lives. And then part of the other frustration is political leaders keep going back and forth and nothing ever gets solidified as far as protecting folks. It's the same damn thing. But we still keep talking about the superiority we've got over the folks. And we're not like them, we're the shining example. We're doing the same thing. And in fact, we're admitting so much more of this carbon issues that go on into the world while Pakistan is dealing with the effects. But yeah. do you care? How do you convince people of that? And we talk about the price tag, right, of the Inflation Reduction Act. We're spending this amount of money. This is so much money. There's a huge cost to not spending enough money. These disasters are expensive. We're gonna have to rebuild homes. We're gonna have to rebuild infrastructure. We're gonna have to relocate people. And so how do you get people to care? It's just gotta be people who live in these communities, standing up, occupying the offices of their elected officials. The only way we've made change in this country is through organizing. We got the Inflation Reduction Act, which is being called the Climate Bill, because congressional staffers occupied Schumer's office. Yeah. That's really what motivated them to draft that bill. It'll take constant, constant pressure, which again, it's why when people have to fight for their lives and their jobs and minimum wage, it makes it harder to do that because you need the time and the energy, which you don't have because you're trying to survive.